On Monday, former White House counsel John Dean testified before the House Judiciary Committee about what he sees as the very serious findings of the Mueller report concerning alleged obstruction of justice on the part of President Trump. Dean is a revered figure on the left for his testimony against President Richard Nixon and others during the hearings related to the Watergate scandal in the 1970s. But as Dean returns to a position of public prominence, it's important to remember his entire role in the Watergate spectacle. In June of 1972, a group of political operatives known as the Plumbers broke into the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate complex in northwest Washington, D.C. What many Americans do not know, however, is how the plot started, what the Plumbers were looking for in the DNC headquarters, how they got caught, and how the man lionized by the left for breaking the scandal wide open actually deserves quite a bit of the blame. The leader of the Plumbers was G. Gordon Liddy, a former FBI agent and an official in the office of the committee to re-elect the president. In 2012, while a talk show host and a colleague of mine at the Radio America Network, Mr. Liddy talked with me about the Watergate scandal, and he told me how the road to the Watergate break-in began. I was uh, down in the office of what came to be known as the Plumbers. I was called by um, Eagle Crow, who was an assistant to John Ehrlichman. And he said, John Dean wants to pitch you on something. And he said, uh, I think I, meaning Crow, ought to be there. And that's because nobody trusted John Dean. So I went up to Dean's office. He said that uh, he wanted an intelligence operation to operate against the Democratic Party in the 1972 election. He wanted me to be in charge of it and Mr. E. Howard Hunt, whose background was a CIA officer, to be assisting me. And he said he wanted an, an all-out, full-bore offensive and defensive intelligence operation. Liddy and Hunt came up with multiple elaborate plans to gather intelligence on the Democrats, but their superiors rejected most of them simply because they were too expensive. But finally, they got the green light. So what were they going to look for? In 1972, Richard Nixon was bracing for a re-election fight against Democratic Senator George McGovern. While many believe the plumbers were looking for campaign secrets and strategies, Liddy says the break-in had a very different goal. The FBI was investigating not one, not two, but three separate call girl operations back then. The uh, assistant United States attorney who was in charge of that was a man named John Rudy. He testified that the FBI came to him and said, we have found a connection between the call girl ring that's being run out of the Columbia Plaza apartments, which is across the street from the uh, Democratic headquarters. The plumbers carefully scouted for a way to slip into the DNC offices without being noticed. They soon determined the nighttime cleaning crew was the weak link in the security because they failed to use a key to lock and unlock the headquarters every time they came in and out of the offices. That provided a way in, but also led to the plumbers being discovered. Crews like that, they always do things the easiest way. And the easiest way was not to use the key and do it like that. You would open it the first time, they would just bump it with their hip to bring more stuff in and open it and close it that way. So we... Our surveillance de detected that, and we figured, all right, that'll be what we'll do. We watched what they did, and they put tape across the spring loaded lock so they could bump it back and forth, and that's what we did. The uh, security guard, he came by, and he saw the tape, and he said, oh, geez, they've done it again. He ripped it off, started making his rounds again. We put the tape back on, and that was our mistake, because he came around again, he saw the tape a second time, and he knew that the cleanup crew had left. So then the question in his mind was, who put the tape on there? Wait a minute, we got a problem. And he called the police. While Watergate did not engulf President Nixon until after his re-election, Liddy was arrested, convicted on multiple counts, and sentenced to prison in January of 1973. Between his arrest and his sentencing, Liddy became a household name for his refusal to talk about the Watergate plotting. He says his silence was based on a very simple premise. 
It concerned me that it was a threat to the administration. I uh, wanted to preserve the administration of Richard Nixon, and I knew that if I didn't talk, it would secure those above me. So uh, I didn't talk. But Dean cracked and uh, talked. That's brought down Richard Nixon. John Dean, the very man who ordered an aggressive intelligence gathering operation against the Democrats in the first place. Liddy already held Dean in exceedingly low esteem. When word of Dean's actions reached Liddy in prison, it simply confirmed what he already knew. I said to myself, this is consistent with what we have always known about Dean. What do I mean by that? Uh, When I first went over to the White House, Donald Santorelli, Deputy Attorney General, said, you know, beware Dean, beware Dean. He said, said, Dean's the kind of guy you'll be typing away an idea you have. Dean will come over and say, you know, what are you doing? And you'll tell him. And then it's lunchtime, and everybody will go to lunch except Dean. And Dean will stay back, not have lunch, type up a memo with your idea, and submit it. (laughs) He said he's an idea thief. G. Gordon Liddy served more time in prison than any other figure associated with Watergate. His sentence was commuted by President Carter after nearly five years of incarceration. Liddy soon became a prolific author, actor, and eventually a radio talk show host for some 20 years. More than 40 years after the Watergate saga began, Liddy makes it clear he has few regrets. He says he had good reasons to break the law, and he says those reasons have been validated over and over again. I saw the Democrats as being dangerous to the country. I see the Democrats now as being even more dangerous to the country. And I wanted to prevent them from being able to damage the country further. So I chose to uh, make use of the special uh, knowledge that I had as a result of the FBI and so forth. That was it. I'm Greg Columbus, reporting for Radio America.